Welcome in to another Musings from the Mind of tutorial where we're going to look at making this uh, twisty bouncy text. This was inspired by YouTuber Jose Ramirez. He has the tilde version if you want to jump over and figure out how to do this in about two minutes. But I wanted to take a look and see if I could do this a little slow down, a little more discussion of what we were doing, and potentially do it with a few less animating steps. So with that said, let's jump in. I'm going to do file, new general, one on the numpad to go to front view, A to select all, delete, shift A, we're going to add a text, we're going to rotate that 90 on the x-axis, so RX 90, enter, I want to jump over here into the font selection, our text editor here, uh, horizontally I want to be center. And vertically, I want to be top of the line. I'm going to come over here and tab into edit mode. I'm going to change this to musings. You can use whatever uh, words you want to. I also want to select a little bit chunkier of a font for us to play with. So I'm going to go with uh, this right here. I am going to scale uh, by six. I am going to turn it just a little bit so we can uh, kind of see the depth. We're going to go under geometry. Uh, under extrude, we're going to hold down the shift button and left click. And we're just going to drag this guy out. Looks like 0.1 is where I want to be. Again, I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad to go to the front view. I am now going to right click and convert this to a mesh. Uh, when you convert text to mesh, I always feel like they have bad geometry. So as you can see right here, so what I want to do is I want to quickly add a modifier. We're going to add the remesh modifier, sharp, uncheck, remove disconnected, and we're going to do an octet depth of 8. And we're going to apply that. And when we hit tab, you can see we have a much better geometry to work with. Now that we've done all that, I want to hit control A and I want to apply all transforms. Uh, the last thing we need to do uh, before we, well, the second last thing we need to do before we start animating, we're gonna separate all the meshes because we're gonna animate the M and, or the first letter uh, of yours and then we're gonna apply that animation to the rest of the letters. So, uh, we're gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, A to select all, P to separate, and we're gonna select by loose parts now we have a separate object for each letter. And the last thing we need to do in preparation is go up here to options, click origins, effect origins only, and then we want to move the origin for each letter um, to the center bottom of each letter. So I'm just going to do a get, get X on each letter on the origin. Uh, the great thing is the eye is already set where it needs to be, so that's one less that we've got to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but just as close to the center bottom as you can for each letter. And we'll finish up with the S, get X. All right. Now, then, so let's go focus on the... Uh, first letter and what we want to do is I'm going to drop my animation to uh, 50 for now Because uh, that's all I need to animate this first letter So what I want to do with the first letter selected we need to go back to options and uncheck effect only origins I want to go to frame 30 and I'm going to uh, Lock that location Then I'm gonna go back to frame 20 and I am going to move this up on the z-axis four units so get z4 enter I am going to lock the location of that and then we're going to go back to frame five and I'm going to drop this guy down uh, negative six so I'm just going to hit in I'm going to go over here to z and I'm going to make this negative six uh, let's make that negative eight instead and I'm going to lock that as well. So you can see what we have now is we have this kind of mechanical looking uh, animation. So what I want to do is jump over real quick 
into the graph editor. I'm going to expand this object transformations. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, un uncheck uh, X and Y, I mean uh, Y and Z. We absolutely do not need uh, the X uh, keyframes, and that actually messes up down the road. So, what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and hit delete on the X. I'm going to hit the I to make Z uh, location available again. I'm going to hit A to select all. I'm going to hit T to look at keyframe interpolation. I want to select Bezier. And then what I want to do is I want to select the keyframe at 5, and we're going to rotate it about 45 degrees. We're going to take the keyframe at 30, and we're going to rotate that bad boy to where it's 90 degrees. And then we're going to go back to this uh, keyframe on 20, and we're just going to get Z, and we're going to move it up so that it is the highest point. And this should make a crisper animation now. Up, and then slams down. Up, and then slams down. All right, let's go back into um, timeline. And then what we want to do is I want to bend the letter so that it looks like it's got some momentum coming up and then when it hits it's got a bit of a bounce to it so what I want us to do is uh, at frame 50 it's gonna be its resting spot so we're gonna add a simple uh, deform we're going to select bend we want to bend on the y-axis so you can see it like this um, but I'm gonna make it zero here because this will be, and I'm going to insert a keyframe with the I. This is going to be where it comes to a rest. I'm going to go back to, z to 1, and I'm going to make this guy negative 45. So it's kind of building up some momentum. I'm going to hit I to add a keyframe there. Then I'm going to come up to 30, and that's when it hits the ground. So that's when I want it to, to bounce hard the other way. So we're going to make that a 45 degree angle hit I then we're going to go to 40 uh, we're going to animate a little bit of a bounce back so negative 30 and add a keyframe so now you can see up down and bounce back up down bounce back alright the next we want to give a have a twist but more than just uh, rotating on the uh, z-axis we're going to use another simple deform so that it has a real good whip to it so we're going to add another simple deform uh, this one will be a twist it'll be on the z-axis um, and at frame one we want it to be 180 degrees so it's good and twisted we'll add a keyframe and then at frame 50 again that's when it's going to come to a rest so we're going to give it a zero and keyframe that. Then all we got left to do for our animation is see we got a good wiggle to it, a good jiggle. Now we're just going to add that whip to it. So on frame 50, we want to keyframe the rotation at uh, zero uh, on the z-axis. Then we want to go back to frame one and we're going to keyframe that z-axis at 180 degrees again hit an eye there and then you can see we have a good whip to our letter um, I'm going to I don't like that it's still spinning uh, when it hits so I'm going to jump in here into the graph editor and I'm going to move that um, that rotation so right here we see the Z rotation uh, I'm going to just un, uh, uncheck everything else so there's no confusion uh, I want to go over here and I want to move this keyframe that is I'm sorry Z rotation this keyframe that's at zero I'm going to double click A to make sure nothing else is selected and I want to get uh, X and I want to move that guy back to 30 and now let's play that that's what I want right there all right so we I've got the the twist the jiggle I've got it all where I want it to be now what I need to do is copy over the trans uh, 
information. So, well, actually, before I do that, because when it copies these animations, it's going to copy everything I have unchecked. So, uh, let's make sure everything is checked back the way we want it. And then I'm going to, actually, I'm going to leave it here because this is where we're going to work from. And I need to select all the letters that are not the one I've animated. Then select the one I've animated. I'm going to hit Control L to link. I want to link animation data. Then I want to hit Control uh, L again. And I want to copy modifiers. And so now all of our letters are doing the exact same thing. Now, I want to offset them so they do it in sequence, but what we've got to be careful of, if I start messing with this animation, since uh, we've linked the animations, it will animate for all of them. So we need to jump up here into Object, go to Relations, and I want to make single user. And I'm going to select Object Animations. That way, um, if I start editing these, it'll only edit one letter at a time instead of editing the animations all of them. So what I need to do is go to the U. I'm going to hit A on my left, make sure I have all of my modifiers visible. I'm going to hit A to select all of them. I'm going to get X, and I'm going to move this over five frames. So now uh, my U is now five frames behind everything else. And so we're just going to keep doing this for the rest of the letters. So we're going to do S, select all, get uh, X, and we're going to move that guy to 10. And then we're going to choose the I, select, I'm sorry, the I, select all, get X, and we're going to move that guy to 15. We're going to take the N, come down here, A to select all, get X, we're going to move that one to 20 choose this guy come down here all get x move that one to 25 then we'll select the last letter uh, select all get and we're going to move that guy to 30 uh, looks like my animation now needs to be 80 frames long so let's go over here and update my timeline we'll just make it 100 and now all the letters are spinning in their own time. I hope that was helpful to you. If it was, please hit like and subscribe. If you have any suggestions on how to do this better, please put them in the comments. Until next time.